In the previous session, I defined the process to define the project. We saw that it contains three steps. In the following session, I will look into each step in more detail. In the first step, we're going to look at how to determine the real needs, to define the end product or products, and finally, to determine the priorities that drive the project. Here you see again the process with the three steps like we defined it before. We are starting with the first step and you see the three processes at the left. Determine the real need, define the end product and determine the priorities. Let's first look into the real needs. What are the real needs? What are the needs to be addressed by this project? Needs and solutions are not the same. We have to understand their difference and the project manager should always start from the needs, not from the solutions. When you give a solution to a project instead of the need, you only have one way that you selected to address the need. There may be more solutions possible and it is the task of the project manager and the team together with the client to identify the best possible solution. When you have a solution, the first thing you have to say what is the original need and are better solutions possible. So, let's have a look at an example. We have a factory where we have the existing situation composed of two production lines which produce 100 units per minute. You receive the project and the solution which is given is to build a third production line. It is clear, I already said it, this is a solution and it's not really the need. It's one way to address the need to increase the capacity from 200 units per minute to 300 units per minute. Is this the best solution? Are there alternatives possible? Well, we can have a look at the production line and say what was the original design capacity of that production line. It may be that the original production line could easily produce 150 units per minute, but when they were installed, 100 units per minute was sufficient and the project was closed when the goal was reached. So we have two production lines giving each 100 units per minute. Our little study revealed that it's possible to increase the capacity of those two production lines to 150 units per minute, which may be a better solution than building a new production line. Another alternative may be that the additional capacity can be reached through outsourcing. Let's have a look at an example of needs and solutions. Let's consider a factory with the existing situation shown in the blue rectangle. There are two production lines, each of them produces 100 units per minute. The total capacity of the factory is 200 units per minute. The owner of the factory comes to you, assigns you as a project manager and tells you, please build me a third production line. A third production line with a total capacity of 100 units per minute. With this solution, the factory will have a capacity of 300 units per minute. As a project manager, the first element to consider is, do I have a need or a solution? In this case, it's very clear, you were offered a solution to address a certain need. So the first thing to do is to find out what is the need that has to be covered by the project. 
we have a production capacity of 200 units per minute and the final result is 300 units per minute. So the need can be defined as increasing the production capacity with 50% or increase the capacity from 100 units per production line and a total of 200 units for the factory to a total of 300 units for the factory. So this offers you a few more possibilities to consider. When you look at the need, you can identify at least two additional solutions that can cover this need. The first solution would be to increase the capacity of the existing production lines. We can, in certain cases, increase that capacity to 150 units per minute, which would also give us the 50% increase and the total capacity of 300 units per minute. A second alternative solution would be to outsource that additional production capacity to another company. So now let's quickly review the different possible solutions and some of the pros and cons of them. First solution was to build a third production line. Building a production line is not cheap, takes time. We need additional space. So these are some negative points related to that third production line. On the other hand, a third production line increases the flexibility of the company. You can switch between production lines. You may have additional capacity. So there are some advantages and disadvantages. And of course, we have to calculate how much they mean in money but also risk and other parameters. The second solution, the first alternative solution, was to increase the capacity of the production lines. This seems to be a very interesting solution. Nevertheless, we have to be sure that it's possible to increase the capacity of the production lines. If this is possible, it is a feasible alternative. It also depends on the age of the existing production lines. When we increase capacity, the failure rate, the quality, may be impacted. The work also has to be done during production time, probably, depending on the setup of the company. So when you are working on the production line, you have a reduced capacity, which also has to be calculated in the total solution. On the other hand, upgrading a production line feels to be cheaper than building an additional production line. So some positive and some negative points to consider. And we have to make again a calculation about this solution. The third alternative was outsourcing. The production. Outsourcing is based on a make or buy scenario. We would buy the products we need from a supplier. We will not invest in the new production line. We will not invest in the increase of capacity of the existing production lines. Outsourcing takes away your flexibility. The other company will provide the work it's more difficult to control. It may be more expensive, probably it will be. So there are advantages and disadvantages of this third solution. It is clear that in this short description, it is not possible to find, let's say, the best solution. We need more parameters. For most of the people, it feels that the solution where we will increase the production lines capacity would be the best solution. But we are not for sure. We have to weigh the advantages and the disadvantages. 
The next step is about defining the end product. What should the end product or products be? What are the deliverables that have to be provided? When is the work completed? It's very important to say when we reach this goal, the work is completed. What are the success criteria? How do we define success? What are the parameters? Also very important. In this step, we have to identify the benefits for the end user and the client. The end user may end up with a more efficient program, working better. The client may save a lot of money. So there are some identification of those benefits to be done. Very important is the mandatory list. What are the features that have to be there? And what is the wish list? What would be nice to have? If we have time and money, we could add those elements which are part of the wish list to the project. We have to identify the quality standards, eventually regulations and other documents that relate to the construction or the building of the end product. And the last very important part is to clearly define what is not included. In many cases, people, to f people forget to add what is not included. When you don't clearly specify this, people may, people may make assumptions that some items are a part of the project. The last process in this first step is to determine the priorities. The priorities relate to scope, cost and time, and it's the application of the triple constraint. You see the triple constraint at the right hand side. Remember, it's also the scope triangle and the iron triangle. The first element to define is what parameter is constraining, what is limiting the project. It can be the scope, it can be the time, or it can be the cost. The second parameter is the parameter to optimize. And the last parameter is the parameter to accept. Accept does not mean that you have a blank check. There are still limitations to that last criterion. Let's have a look at an example. We look at the year 2000 project. Some of you may remember it. Some of you may have been very young when this happened. But the problem was that during the 20th century, when computer programming started, there was a limited capacity. The limited capacity of memory, of speed of processors and so on. Programmers try to reduce the size of their programs, of their data. And one of the elements they did was leaving away the first two numbers of the year. So 1950 became 50. 2000 minus 1950 is 50. But when you only take the two first numbers away, you get minus 50. So somebody who's born in 1950 at the year 2000 would have an age of minus 50. So it was important to rewrite or adjust the existing programs. And for this project, the constraint was time. Everything had to be ready at the first second of the year 2000. They falsely called it the millennium bug because 2000 is not the start of the new millennium. That's 2001, but it was the last year of the previous millennium. The second parameter was to optimize the scope. Definitions were made, differences were made between very important items to correct, 
up to, well, if it happens, we can live with it. Small things that could be neglected, but the main things had to be resolved. The last parameter was accept. The budget was accepted. A lot of money was spent. A lot of money, well, many people say it was too expensive, but nobody would take the risk to go back to the old programs. A similar project like this was the introduction of the Euro. Everything had to start on January the 1st, the first minute after midnight. All the ATMs started working in Euro. So they had to do this over the entire Eurozone. It was also a very complex project with the same constraint, the time. So this was the first step of the process. In the six, this was the first step of the process. In the next session, I will continue with step two. Great job and see you there.